สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ Have a good Friday morning with us with Good Morning with Thai PBS World. I'm Hatay b e s h a k i t i r a n a n and I'm Na Bunai. And kickstarting the program today with the hot issue in Thailand at the moment, where the Where which the it's a shocking police brutality that killed one drug suspect, and it has been confirmed that the main suspect involved in the alleged killing had been arrested last night. So yesterday, police colonel Titi San u t a n a p o n surrendered himself to police in c h o n b u r i During the press conference last night, he said that he did not aim to kill him, and it was an accident. And he also denied that he had. Had been trying to extort two million baht of money, claiming that he was just trying to extract information on drugs. At the same time, the national police chief s w a t d a n g y o t s o k told reporters that they will show the public that they will not protect any of the wrongdoers. And joining us to shed some light on the incident this morning is Kun Sunai p a s u k a senior researcher on Thailand at Human Rights Watch. สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีครับ Good morning to you. Hi, thank you for joining us today. So the strong public backlash is attributed to a whistleblower leaking a video that has gone viral. But what about other cases of such police brutality that we probably haven't even heard of and such wealth as well? So is it common from your experience? Torture in police custody, especially uh, in the context of anti-drug operation. Uh, Is very common in Thailand. Each year, there are cases reported to Human Rights Watch and other human rights groups. But the problem is, um, what happened uh, in the Konsawan? It just happened in front of camera, and the footage was later leaked, uh, creating public outcry and anger, prompting uh, reaction from the Royal Thai Police. But in other cases. There was no witnesses. There were no evidence. There were no footage, and 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 families of the victim or the victims themselves who survived the torture were too scared to report their audios. So this is only tip a tip of a very big iceberg in Thailand that need to be addressed seriously and thoroughly. And now that all of these suspects have been arrested, but based on last night's press conference, do you think justice will really be served? Seeing how the rich and powerful often get away with such crimes. The police press conference last night was, to me, an insult to the to the Thai public. It was not about reporting the progress of police investigation and what will be the direction of, uh, of 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 the investigation, but rather providing an opportunity to the prime suspect in this case, the one who ordered and committed torture, to provide his uh, excuses, which were rather lame to the public, and and who do they think they are trying to fool? Thai people are not that stupid. What happened last night at the police conference did not give any confidence that justice will be delivered in this case. Mm. Thank you. And k u n s u n a i people are talking about the need for police reform. So, do you see that happening at all? Uh, especially, like uh, if we consider the army reform talk before as well, and considering the uh, the main suspect uh, so much wealth, and uh, if such reform is is going to take place, what do you think should be changed first? Uh, first of all, this government, this prime minister, came into office with. Major promises to initiate reforms of the military and the police. We have already seen that promises regarding military reform have become a flop. Nothing has really happened. One more question. And 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 with that, I don't have any confidence at all that we would see any serious action regarding police reform. Let's not forget that, as the Prime Minister of Thailand, General p r a y u t is directly in charge of the Royal Thai Police. Seven years have passed. He has done nothing. Do you think he's going to do it now? No. 
All right. Thank you so much for your insight today, and have a good morning. The same to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank so you much. Pesh. So we will have to wait and see whether justice will really be served for this time round. Exactly. And now let's talk about COVID-19 uh, vaccines. Uh, we mentioned yesterday, though, that the new vaccination plan where children aged 12 to 18 will also be inoculated with Pfizer. But let's now take a look at some of the side effects. Recently, King Jula Longon Memorial Hospital published the side effects of the Pfizer vaccine among children on its website. The most common undesirable side effects among children are pain in the injected area, fatigue and headaches. Other side effects include fever, shivering, nausea, vomiting, muscle pains and joint pains. Inflammation of heart muscles were found at very low rates. And based on research, Pfizer has high efficacy against COVID-19, where it can increase immunity levels among children to the same levels as people aged 16 to 25. And so far, Pfizer, which is an mRNA vaccine, is the only vaccine allowed to be used among children, as other types of vaccines are not recommended yet. So this is to keep in mind that the big lot of Pfizer vaccine, which is 30 million doses that has been ordered by the government, will reach the country in just a couple of months. And, and Kunat, I believe, has some explainers and infographics for you when it comes to food delivery during this time of partial lockdown. That's right, Kunat Thai. And we have to admit, that during the partial lockdown where many people are forced to stay at home and work from home as well, ordering food from delivery apps has become an essential part for our daily lives. And today we have some interesting information to share with you about the current demand for food delivery, including the most popular dishes being ordered through delivery apps. As you're seeing right behind me, apart from coffee, tea, and chocolate drinks, these are the Thai food staples that made to the list. So we have something like tampu prara or the spicy papaya salad with, with fermented fish and salty crabs. And there's also roasted pork or skewers or mu bing, as well as a favorite for breakfast, patong go or the deep fried donuts as well. And the average price of these items being ordered is around only 60 to 70 baht. And let's like, uh, let's let take a look at the days as well and as many people particularly those living in the COVID-19 dark red zones having to work from home so there's the need to order food online and that has increased substantially so according to line man one of the food delivery services in Thailand more orders are being placed than ever before and as you can see Fridays and weekends see the highest number of orders especially around lunchtime so the peak hours are around 11 a.m to 12 p.m. and another peak would be during dinner which is around 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. and another time would be 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. So we can see that these are the peak times where most food orders have been made and if we look at the areas where in Bangkok that ordered the food, the most food during delivery through delivery app. So people in Chattuchak area and Lakrabang area ordered the most food compared to Batumwan and Watana districts. They they used to be the top areas, but now it's these two areas on the suburbs of Bangkok. And if we look at the age group that orders the most food, students and first jobbers aged 20 to 24 place the most orders, followed by those aged 30 and those aged 25 to 29 as well. And due to the ongoing COVID-19 restrictions, many of the restaurants cannot open for dining in. Therefore, they can only rely on delivery services as their main source of income, leading to a revenue increase for the food delivery sector. And according to Kasikar Research Center, they predicted that food delivery business this year will grow up to 
18.4 to 24.4 percent, or an estimated of 53 to 55 billion baht. And as for the number of food orders, it is expected that this year would be around 120 million orders compared to two years ago. So that is threefold increase as well. So we can see that we can see that this is a very high demand right here and the increase in online food orders also means that there's an intensified competition as well prompting many of the delivery operators to adapt quickly to attract more customers as well as to maintain their market share as well Kunatai. Well, that's really useful information indeed, and actually you already made me hungry, and I already <laughs> ate Kunat. Well, at least you have an idea what you would like to have for lunch as well. Exactly, and thank you for that. And moving on now to other stories in our daily roundup. The Bangkok Metropolitan Administration, or BMA, uh, will be launching its mobile the, uh, vaccination services to people living in various communities in the capital. The blue buses have medical equipment, including a fridge for the storage of vaccines, first aid kits, stretchers, a portable AED, and will be staffed by a doctor, nurses, and other health officials. And the BMA plans to vaccinate as many people as it can as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, the Thai Red Cross Society is asking the public to donate blood urgently, saying that hospitals are experiencing a critical shortage of blood reserves for patients, forcing the postponement of many vital surgeries. The director of the National Blood Center of the Thai Red Cross Society said the COVID-19 pandemic has caused a substantial drop in blood donations. Normally, an average of 200,000 units of blood are needed every day by hospitals, but but only 149,000 units of blood were donated back in July. And the Thai Ruam Jai scheme has announced new vaccination appointments for those who will be receiving second doses of AstraZeneca and were previously inoculated with the first dose since June. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Education, Science, Research and Innovation revealed that around 28 million people across the country have been vaccinated against COVID-19 so far. However, only 9.7% of the entire population have been fully vaccinated. Turning to politics, the date for the censure debate has been decided, which is from next Tuesday to Friday, with the no confidence vote against the Prime Minister and five other ministers set on Saturday. The opposition will focus their debate and motion on the government's handling of the current wave of the pandemic, as well as the economic fallout. This will be the third no confidence motion against the second Prayut administration, where all ministers survived both motions. So we will have to wait and see whether the Prime Minister and other ministers will survive again in the next censure debate. But it is very likely that they might survive because the government side remains the majority. Exactly, but at least I think it's a good exercise of a democracy where things can still be questioned and debated. Exactly, and now it's time for some lighter stories during times where we are at home. This would be a great opportunity to spend more time with your family. And this family in Ayutthaya decided to make their own remote control boats together so that their son takes some time away from his phone. Let's find out more in this report by Kun Kiti. When a child wants to have the remote control boat, most parents would just buy them at the toy store. This family in UTR, however, is a bit different as the father built the boat himself and later on, he built some for sale too. <laughs> Amna and his nine-year-old son, Nu, are working on their remote control boat together, trying to finish building it to play with it on the pond. This is his first boat, which he built for his son. <laughs> 
มาวาดรูปเป็นรถมอเตอร์ไซค์อย่างนี้นะแล้วก็ชอบพ่อเคยทำเรืออันนี้ให้แล้วก็มาวาดรูปให้พ่อดูเป็นรูปเรืออย่างเงี้ยครับแล้วก็พ่อก็ค่อยๆทำพ่อก็หาซื้อไม้มาทำครับแต่ก่อนนะเขาชอบดูโทรศัพท์ผมก็จะบังคับเขาให้เขาดูเป็นเวลาแต่พอให้เขาดูเป็นเวลาปุ๊บเขาไม่มีโทรศัพท์เขาจะไปหาอานุมาเล่นหาอันนี้มาเล่นเอากระดาษมาตัดเป็นรูปเรือเป็นรอยน้ําผมก็นั่งดูลูกแล้วก็เออก็เกิดไอเดียขึ้นหาไม้มาทําให้เขาหาไม้มาทําเลยทีแรกเรียนรู้จากก็ลองผิดลองถูกไหมครับดูดูดูในของจริงมากครับในใน YouTube ที่มีแบบเรียกแข่งอะไรแบบนี้นั่นแหละก็เลยเราก็จำเอามาจำจากของจริงแล้วมาทำเป็นจำลองครับทำลำแรกเลยก็จะเป็นแบบลำลำนี้ลำนี้อ่าดูลำแรกอ่าลำแรกที่ที่ทำแบบนี้ก็จะวิ่งยังวิ่งไม่ได้ครับก็คือว่าแบบช่วงเนี้ยมันยังมันจะต้องสูงเพราะนี่ฮะฮะมันจมน้ำไงแล้วช่วงนี้มันก็จะเล็กจะเล็กไปแล้วก็เปลี่ยนมาเรื่อยเปลี่ยนมาก็จะมาเป็นแบบเรือพวกนี้ครับก็จะเริ่มมาใหญ่ใหญ่หน่อยก็มาติดตั้งยาวแล้วก็ยังแบบว่าประมาณนี้แล้วก็เริ่มทํามาเรื่อยๆเป็นเรือมีหลังคาเป็นเรือหางยาวครับเรือรับผู้โดยสารพวกนั้นก็เริ่มทําทําเล่นมาแล้วก็มีคนขอซื้อไป Amnat is a full-time employee at the departments of drainage and sewage. He built these boats in his spare time, and it takes him around two weeks to finish one. To date, he has sold more than 100 remote control boats. Most of his clients contact him via Facebook. ก็เรือลำหนึ่งถ้าถ้าถ้ามีเวลาให้เขาจริงๆเลยวันหนึ่งก็ขึ้นเป็นรูปร่างได้ครับแล้วก็แล้วก็มาเสริมความสวยงามใส่สีใส่อะไรก็จะอยู่ประมาณสองอาทิตย์ครับสองอาทิตย์ก็ตากแดดให้สีแห้งสีอะไรประมาณนี้ก็พร้อมติดตั้งได้ก็จะอยู่ประมาณเกือบเกือบครึ่งเดือนนะครับเรือลำหนึ่งเพราะว่าต้องใช้เวลาเก็บรายละเอียดนิดนึงเพราะว่ารายละเอียดเยอะครับใช่ถ้าต้องทําให้แบบสวยๆให้ออกมาเหมือนจริงเลยครับจะพูดคุยกับเขาไม่พอเลยงั้นจะพูดกับเขาไปที่นี่และคุณเห็นเขาพูดกับรถรีโมทควบคุมไฟกันอยู่ในทะเลนี่And he said that the max speed of the remote control boat is around 80 to 90 kilometers per hour. So you can see that. He said the advantage of building the remote control boat is the valuable time it gives him with his son. And if his son likes this hopping, he said. His son can just continue building them by himself. Kitty Patil Sukjit reporting for Thai PBS World. So this is definitely a great idea to strengthen the bond within the family, but we have to admit that we've been spending too much time on our phones, on social media, to a point that we forgot to appreciate the time being with our loved ones. Exactly, Kunad, and this is very uh, creative indeed. And of course, we news people are actually uh, as much guilty as it can be when it comes to this uh, habit of being on phones a lot. Definitely, we're on our iPads, iPhones, on all these things, all of these new technologies all the time. And sometimes we forgot to appreciate things around us or even like birds singing, the rain, all these things. These are the beautiful things that sometimes we took for granted because we're too focused on the new technology 
activities and chatting with other people. Exactly. And Gunad, uh, speaking of the case, we actually still following uh, on the uh, killing of a drug suspect. It was right. actually good to hear from an expert like Kun Sunai uh, as well, who shed some light uh, of the system. But we'll have to wait and see if justice will really be served. Definitely. This is in the public interest right now. So definitely we will have to wait and see whether the suspect will really be held accountable. Exactly. And with that, we wrap up today's program. But be sure to catch us every weekday at 7.30 a.m. and follow our social media and website at www.thaipbsworld.com for all the top stories, explainers and analysis, as well as all these kinds of interviews. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ Thank you.